All right, folks, here we go. We're going to be taking this motorcycle on the freeway. And here we go. I have the camera in my hand. I'm going to be putting it inside the helmet so it will be hands-free. Camera going in. And we're hands-free. So here we go. We got lots to cover and little time to cover it in. So let's hit the road. Uh, we're going to be talking about why I left atheism to become a Christian. And I'm going to give you some very good solid proof and evidence that Christianity is true. And another another atheist has left atheism to become a Christian you can look below this video click where it says more info and you can read that so let's get started real quick I want to do this video under 15 minutes or 15 minutes max when I was an atheist I could not find any scientific proof evidence anything even philosophical evidence historical evidence anything that proved atheism was true in fact I found out the complete opposite I found out it was very evil over 200 million murders rapes genocide that were done under the banner of atheism look up the e very evil history of atheism look at the Statue of Liberty there it's getting to be tax time <laughs> look up the very his history of uh, evil history of atheism the atheist regimes of Stalin, Pol Pot Mao, the Kim Il Rouge, um, Kim Jong Il. So I could not find any proof and evidence that atheism was even true. And as you know, just to prove to you that it is not true, we did a scientific experiment right here on YouTube. If you click below this video, you'll see the scientific experiment, all the links, where I challenged thousands of atheists on radio shows, TV shows, YouTube, to provide proof, evidence, anything that would show atheism is true, because there really is no, no reason to, to believe it's true. The number one most subscribed to atheists on YouTube finally waved the white flag, and he admitted he cannot prove that atheism is true. You'll see that video below here. Uh, the Amazing Atheist, I call him the Amazingly Hellbound Atheist. I, I don't, I'm not happy about that. I don't want him to go to hell. But uh, if there's anything amazing, it's amazing how foolish some people are. They choose hell. So he admitted, though, in all honesty, he said he could not prove atheism was true or accurate. You'll see that video below. The Atheist Experience Show could not prove that atheism was true. They started rambling on obsessively about unicorns. Aaron Raw could not prove it was true. The, Th the Thunderfoot could not prove atheism was true. Ladies and gentlemen, thereby proving what I've said all along, that atheism is a bunch of crap. But let's move away from the crap and let's talk about truth. Do you know on this planet that I'm currently riding on, and you are currently living on, and by the way, it's really foggy and cold out here. There are certain constants that were necessary to bring this universe into being. And the constants had to be so fine-tuned in order to allow life to be possible on this planet. And if you look at how fine-tuned this universe is, and how it had to be, especially at the creation of the universe. You will realize it only can be a chance or something in natural law caused it to be that way, or design. Well, let's go through this. It can't be chance. If you look at the, the numbers, it, your, your head will just practically explode when you look at how miraculous it must be that it's all just chance give me the peace sign oh he wants me to get in here i can't get in there it's a double line i'll go later don't worry about it i'm doing a video 
He's saying, hey, get in. And I can't because if you cross a double line, you're not supposed to do that. But nice guy uh, to let me move it. Anyways, back to what I'm saying. It can't be chance. If it was chance, that would mean a miracle happened, thereby thus giving more evidence to proof of God. <laughs> it can't be natural law. There's nothing in natural law that says that all those constants need to be this way, that the universe needs to be fine-tuned. It's very cold all of a sudden, I just noticed. Therefore, it must be design. Design is the rational decision. Let's see what else I got here. We know the universe had a beginning. It only can be a natural beginning or supernatural beginning. Well, it can't be natural because all the universe is made up of nature. So how could... Now I think I'll take this guy up on his offer and get over in his brain. How could the universe bring itself into beginning? Into existence, I should say. If there was nothing in the beginning, which is what scientists say, the universe actually had a beginning. It's like a cone. As you go backward in time, it gets smaller and smaller. The universe had a beginning. There was no infinitesimal condensed pellet that expanded and made all of this. Tell that to a 12-year-old child, they'll laugh at your face. Even the kids don't believe it. There was a beginning. Scientists admit there was a beginning. Stephen Hawking says it's pretty much agreed upon by scientists around the world that the universe had a beginning. Well, if it had a beginning, it's either a natural beginning where the universe created itself. Look at that smart car, the, the car you don't drive, the car you wear. I love this smart car. Or supernatural. How could nothing create everything? The universe would have had to exist to bring itself into existence, you follow me? So out of nothing, the humanist atheists want us to believe the, uni the universe created itself. Nobody's buying it. In fact, over 90% of the world population are theists, and they reject wholeheartedly atheists. Let's go to uh, the moral argument. i got to get on this freeway over here. There are absolute morals. Some things are very, very wrong. If morality, if objective morality exists, therefore God exists. And I think deep down inside, all of us know that there is objective morality. Now, let's go through proof and evidence of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and by the way, remember how I was talking about the fine-tuned argument? We are literally balanced in this universe. Our life is on a knife's edge. Let's, let's take it more realistic, a razor's edge. If you were to change just one of those constants, just a fraction of a hair, just a hair's breadth, the universe would cease to exist. Life would not exist on this planet as we know it. It'd be a dead earth. <clears throat> Stephen Hawking said that in his book, I believe, A Brief History of Time. Now, let's go through the historical evidence of Jesus Christ. You know, when I asked, when I was an atheist and I asked my Christian friends for proof and evidence, uh, they said, hey, we have proof and evidence that Christianity is true. And you know, they did, but atheism had nothing. When I asked my friends, you know, what are we going to say to these Christians? They really do have proof and evidence that atheism is true. My friends spouted back some silly, stupid stuff. Well, tell them the unicorn, Santa Claus, leprechauns, you know. Well, you know what? That's good if you're like, you know, nine years old. But when you get to be an adult and you get to be a man and a rational thinker, those silly little sayings don't really carry much weight for someone that has a brain, that someone that is a rational thinker. Do you know, um, we asked the Atheist Experience Show to prove atheism is accurate and correct, and they talked for like five minutes about unicorns, and then a unicorn in a cardboard box, and then invisible unicorns. It's just nuts. But let's talk about truth. We know it's pretty much everyone, the majority of New Testament scholars, pretty much everyone agrees Jesus Christ lived. But they also agree that there must be an axe over here on the right. Watch, you can see it right here. They also agree that he died, and most New Testament scholars, oh, they just, not an axe, agree on the empty tomb. That is historical. 
They also agree on the eyewitness accounts. You know there was over 500 eyewitnesses, even enemies of Jesus Christ. We're going to go here, go right. I got five more minutes. Let's pick up throttle. Here we go. Even the enemies of Jesus Christ. Some of them said that they saw Jesus resurrected. And they became Christians themselves. Saul, on the road to Damascus, saw Jesus. They also said that he appeared to James, which was Jesus' younger brother. Now, why would these people die for the belief that they saw Jesus Christ? You know, i got to tell you something. We had an atheist in the chat room. If you click below here, shockingout.net, you'll see our chat room. I'm going to pick up more throttle here. And I asked the atheist, would you die for atheism? If someone said to renounce atheism, you know, they had a gun to your head, would you do it? And he's like, no, I would lie and just say, nah, I don't believe in atheism. It's a bunch of crap. And, and I would tell him that. I said, well, you know, there's a bunch of Christians in there. I asked them, would you be willing to stand up for Jesus Christ or would you deny him in the face of death? And every Christian said they would not deny Jesus Christ. See, atheism is a lie and people won't die for a lie where are the atheist martyrs people don't want to die for a lie and the atheist was right to say no he wouldn't want to die for the lie of atheism so check this out we got science that points to god now we have dna which is information if anyone thinks dna <laughs> is just some random random chance occurrence they got to get their head checked it is information the truth of the matter is most of the world will admit that there is a God you know over 90% of the world admits God exists the rest are suppressing it another reason why I left atheism guys is it contradicts itself badly. Some atheists say it's possible for God to exist. Most of them say that. But they say, but even if he does exist, I don't want to worship him because he did atrocities. I said, name even one atrocity that God did, and they can't name it. They'll bring up Sodom and Gomorrah sometimes. Said, he killed the whole town. And I go, well, the town was corrupt. They were trying to rape people that came into the town. That's what this town of Sodom and Gomorrah was doing. As people would come into the town, the men of Sodom would rape the people that come into the town. Well, heck, even in our modern times, let me speed up a little bit, I want to get in front of this dude. Even in our modern times, we have laws that are against rape. So because God judges these people that are raping and he destroys their town, like, why should we be mad at him? You should be glad that God is a God of justice. I am. Now look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something really neat on this video. Below this video, you're going to see some links to some YouTube videos. I'm going to show you proof and evidence that atheism is a lie. What you're going to see is atheists basically admitting it on video. You're going to see them contradicting each other. You're going to see them fumbling and bumbling as they try to refute the arguments that I just gave, and they can't do it. The only thing they could bring up <laughs> is Santa Claus, leprechauns, and, and unicorns. And I don't mind when they bring that up. Because when people look at the arguments that I just made, this guy's moving stuff from this truck, and you compare it with the silly, immature Santa Claus Leprechaun unicorn analogy, you'll see that Christianity is the rational choice, the intelligent choice. Intelligent people, rational people, honest people, sincere people, choose Christianity. So you're going to see some videos, amazing atheists admitting atheism is not true, he can't prove it. You're going to see um, the Atheist Experience Show too, check it out right below.